Hello, it's me. I am James and we are welcoming you back to Heartbreakers Podcast. Thanks for being with us, Heartbreakers. We really love you. How are you, Elsa? Freezing. (laughs) I know. (laughs) It's so cold here, but no, I'm really good. Good. I'm so good. You know, I went on that trip and saved my soul. So how was Dubai? I want to know. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. I'm not joking. You have done a lot of cool, great things in my life, but that was the best thing I've ever done for myself. I'm telling you at 27, that was the best thing I could have possibly done was go on a vacation by myself and really think about my thoughts and not be scared of them, not have any interruptions of people, you know? really processing that. and healing. I thought I was going to go and cry and like, you know mm. what I mean? And all this type of stuff. No. First of all, table for one is so cool. I mean, like going somewhere by yourself, yeah. they call it like table for one. Like I think that it one takes like a lot of guts and also a lot of growth in your life to be able to be okay with being by yeah. yourself. Because I have so many friends that it's are like, hard. they would rather cut off their legs and arms before being by themselves. Because it's just like avoidance, avoidance, mm-hmm. avoidance. I thought I was okay by myself because I live by myself. Like a yeah. lot of my life. Away, oh, and 15 like, hours. I'm not right. going to lie. My first day, like my, I landed at eight o'clock at night. The next day I went, just had breakfast. And then I, I sat on the beach and I was like, should I go home? Like, I literally was like, uh, I need to go home. I felt so far from home and yeah. it really scared me. And I talked to a friend and she was like, that's why you went there was for you yeah. to overcome these things. Feel those and, feelings. And feel the feelings. Yeah. And then I was like, you know what? She's so right. And I sat there and I felt my feelings and they were not as scary as I thought they were going to be. And I decided who I want in my life and who I want to even tell my secrets to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it was so good. I love that so much. I realized what I wanted out of a man. Like I'm telling you, I sat there like this on the beach, in the water, at the spa, shopping, whatever. And I just thought about what I really needed in my life. And it was so it was so healing. I also went and volunteered at a homeless shelter the day before. Yeah. I then went and partied until three o'clock. After that, I went and <laughs> party. You a little bit of the scary. <laughs> yeah, like, 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 you're like, why am I traveling away yeah. with a hangover? That's yes. the worst. And we you got drugged. travel with a hangover. I always travel with a hangover. Yeah. I don't know why I do that. <laughs> and we excited. got drugged. It's... We got drugged at a strip club the night before. No. Yes. Really? Was yes. it real? Like, yes. Or you... yes, yes, yes. It was so what? real. Um, we don't know, but there wasn't many people at the strip club yeah. and we think that they did it to keep people there. We actually think it was the strippers that did it because we didn't have any guys around us so i went i got i got on the (laughs) flight a 15 hour flight hung over probably still drugged (laughs) <laughs> so of course I got there and I was like, like I'm oh, coming God. down it doesn't matter where yes. I am I'm fucking freaking out I want to be at home with my dogs yeah okay you overcame a lot that's fair to say since uh-huh. we last <laughs> I know, I know. but like to elaborate on that like that is so cool because like so I go to these support groups and it's like the way that my mind has shifted in the last two years about like and only recently am I able to really do it is like sitting in feelings and not always needing to feel good or like trying to avoid bad feelings like they need like right. a new publicist bad feelings are like the biggest indicators of change and like also it's like a quiet excitement like yes this feels horrible i wonder mm-hmm. what this is leading me to like yeah. i feel so well, bad hard. right now there can only be a bit of growth or like everything grows out of pain and well i was scared my sad thoughts and my mm. dark thoughts are very dark you know and people don't realize that for me like they're mm. very very dark because of stuff that people have done to me and mm. to for me to process like how extreme some of the things are was very scary for me and i just didn't want i thought i was processing it because it was always coming up in my brain i always asked myself why did this person do this to me i really realized when i was on my trip why did i get myself in that situation why was i there in the first place like how did i even get there and that really has been what is the healing part for me? Cause I'm not gonna get the answer from anybody on why yeah. they, they don't even know themselves, why yeah. they have said or done, you know? No, and hurt people hurt people. Yeah, so they're their own, like they've got yeah. their own thing going on. It's hard to not in those moments, like be like, why didn't I, you know, like, why did I let myself get in these situations? It's also just like, we're living our lives mm-hmm. and to be gentle with yourself. Yeah. Um, is what I felt, but like also the fact that you're even able to look at it objectively and stand mm-hmm. back and be like, that happened. And I wonder why I was- why 
that situation, that you're already ahead of the game. I know. Like, and then all, another thing, it was like, I honestly was so scared to break down and not recover from it. Mm -hmm. Like really like cry and like not be able to mentally bring myself back up. That's why I never wanted to process certain mm -hmm. things. And it, I, that's not what happened. I didn't, uh, like I it's said, I didn't like even you, cry. It's almost like you're scared that like, like if I open this door, it oh might bowl me over. Like, I don't know oh what's my behind God, that might door. Delay me. And I've been sh holding it shut for so long. It's like pushing out, pushing out. But you're like, there's too many things behind the door now that yeah. it might just go boom. And then I'm like, oh, why did I Can't try and it. why yeah. did I open that? Because yeah. now I'm fucked. It's so funny because when you actually face your feelings, sometimes you're like, oh, I wish I did this ages ago. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, And you're like, because it seems the unknown is like, it just gets built up so much, even though like shit is real and it's fucked up. It's so fucked up. Like things up. that happen and yeah. I don't know exactly. Whatever. What, doing, what did you do while I was gone? Um, <laughs> I didn't do that. Um, <laughs> what did I do? Um, I've just been kind of hanging out. Good. Um, I've been really good. Oh, I'm four months sober yesterday, good. like continuously now. So, good. like, you know, I have my slips and whatever. Yeah. So, it makes me, so the longer I go, like, other things are removed from my life that aren't as, like, like my anxiety really balances out. I go through moments of, like, you know, my mind is very obsessive. So, I can use anything as drugs. I can use mm -hmm. people as drugs. I can use food as drugs, shopping, like, anything else in the world. So, like, watching other things come up when those other things that I usually medicate with are taken away. I medicate mm -hmm. with other things or like the constant need for validation or, and that's like, you know, using people as drugs, like, you know, tell me I'm okay, tell me I'm okay, I'm doing a good job. Or like, I'm a good person or like, love me or, or think I'm cute. Like, you mm -hmm. know, like so many things. Um, I think I'm cute. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, the way you said it. <laughs> well, that's why, because then I was like obsessively working out and like really trying to, and I'm like, this is an healthy item because now- Are you still on it? Yes, I am. Oh. Can't you tell? <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't sure if you stopped <laughs> or if I've you- I've lost a lot of weight. You have. So I was no. like, are you Oh, really? Or? Yeah, oh. of course. Okay, because then last week, I mean, I'm literally, I, for I was forcing myself so much to eat that like I kind of broke through for a bit, so I had to up the dosage because then I was just eating normally again. Like your body can get used to anything, anything. Yeah. but it was kind of nice to- have a neck again <laughs> and then also just like and not two chins yeah and then i've been like flirting a little bit around Good. town you know what i found though i was flirting with some of the people that like i've talked previously about like wanting to date and then they ended up getting boyfriends and now I i'm remember. just i'm just somehow like everybody's friend now and either they want three ways with me or i am playing a dangerous game of like but don't you want me? Instead, <laughs> that's a know. dark game. I know. Well, I don't do it honestly, like on purpose. It's just that like they will flirt and yeah. I won't shut it down. Yeah. Honestly, like, you know me, like I'm not that sexual or anything like that. So mm. I'm just using it for validation. Yeah. So it could be harmless. But at the same time, I'm like, this isn't great. So like, but it's not, it's not eventuated yeah. into anything. Yeah, of um, course. But see, oh, maybe you it. can be a threesome, like have a three, <laughs> like maybe that third. will make you feel comfortable, but it's not so like relationship driven because you just are that additional person. Honestly, I think it's just like I have this giant void inside myself and I need other people to fill it with like love and validation, but I don't actually want them in my yeah. life. Like I only have room for me and Moo Moo, my mm -hmm. little dog. And like, that's it. Like I'm, I'm thinking of taking some trips um, and I'm like freaking out because I'm so attached to this Moo Moo now, my little dog. Cause she saved my life too. Like mm -hmm. I had a really dark couple of years ago, which I'm really feeling good about coming out of at the moment too. Cause I'm reconnecting with old friends and I'm like kind of, I'm looking at it in hindsight with them going like, oh, fuck, wasn't I fucked up? They're like, yeah, we didn't know what to do with you. Like, honestly, like yeah. it was a duck. They kind of blamed my ex-husband a little bit. They were like, we gave you to him <laughs> in LA in like a pretty good shape. And then he <laughs> returned you all fucking broken and like wow. didn't want to. And he's like, but was always pointing the finger at you and never took any maybe he responsibility. Maybe destroyed your self-esteem. Yeah. Maybe, he, maybe he did contribute to... Well, where you're at mm. emotionally and mentally. Clearly, I mean, you haven't really had a stable relationship since, right? Mm -mm, no. So there's a lot of healing that needs to be done from that. You guys need to stop being friends. I, I know you still so, want to be friends yeah. with him, but don't do that. It's not good for him or... Well, no, he it's always makes you me. feel like yeah, shit he after. Does, yeah. He always does. And you know, one of my exes actually tried yeah. to get a hold of me when I was in Dubai. And yeah. I was like, why are you making me feel like shit? Like he yeah. was like trying to scare me while I was there. And like, exes can't be involved. I don't yeah. think they can. 
I know some people think, oh, yeah, So it's I'm these friends, little passive no. aggressive little digs or like anything you do. It's like, of course you do that or like blah, blah, blah. Or yeah. like, and I'm like, what is your problem? I'm calling you with sunshine and like happiness and like whatever. Well, and jealous. you're like, oh, you're a Pollyanna living in the clouds. And I'm like, what the fuck do you need to do? Like, why is that necessary? Are you having he a bad day? Some, he you need to himself. make someone He's else. having a bad day yeah. every day. That's yes. a problem. Oh, my God. At least have some happy days. Yeah. But, that's yeah. another thing that I decided to like people who are always upset. Mm. You know how I tested- A lot of people lean on you. Remember we were saying a while ago, it was like, why does everyone call you with this shit? There was like some- Well, you, that, yeah. that's that. And yeah. I'm stopping that. Yeah. But you know, another thing that I stopped, which I really figured out who were my friends. This is, I had to dig deep into this. People's opinions really hurt me mm. a lot. And not only their opinion, their bad advice affects me. And it's not advice that I'm going to them and asking for. I'm not mm. sitting there. I have my four people. Mm. It used to be five. I have my mm. four people and I ask those people. I trust their advice because they've known me for such a, a long time that it's not actually advice. It's support mm. and it supports my peace yeah. and nothing else. And everybody else in my life, I would just sit there and they would ask me, oh, what's going on in your life, blah, 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 blah. And I would give up too much information. But then they would come and start giving me advice. And I'm not asking them, what do you think I should do with this person? What do you think I should do career wise? And I was taking it in, even though yeah. I knew they were wrong. And I was actually acting those things out and I was actually affecting like me. Like subconsciously, it yes. would just chip away. And people were one, wanting to live through me. Why do you, yeah, because I was going to say, wanting why do you think they're giving me. you this advice? Wanting to live through me, jealousy, yeah. it hurts their egos. Mm. They want to see me fail. And then there's just like, they themselves mm. just don't like where they're at. So they, yeah, they, they are giving that. me advice on where they're actually at in their life. And that's just not the case. And I decided mm. like, I'm getting rid of the people and I'm testing these mm. people too. Cause I was with somebody yesterday and I had said, no, I'm at peace, everything's good. And she was like, you know what, girl, you're not, you're, you're blah, blah, blah. Oh, you're this, God. you're that. And, and not you're this and that, yeah. but she was like, yeah. I don't think you're really like, I know that so-and-so really hurt. And I was like, no, I'm at peace. Like, I'm not going to let this person, yeah. like I would seriously sit there and be like, I never actually thought about that. That person could do that to me. Yeah. And it would actually go in my head. Yeah. And I also have certain people that they seriously wanted a good story. They yeah. really wanted to laugh at what I was going through because- Laugh, do you think? Absolutely. Because I get myself in such crazy situations with such crazy people. Oh, so it was people. like a TV show for them. It like was. literally, it was you're like, yeah. My failing relationships yeah. and what was happening to me was amusement for people. You gotta be so careful So careful, that. but I didn't realize that. But same with your ex too. He yeah, no, totally. By... I'm like, yeah, I'm like this applies to so many people, yeah. I'm sure. And don't ever be around yeah. somebody and don't ever actually take it advice yeah. when you're not asking for well, it. you know I'm what they say is it. like, you are who you hang out with 80% like, yeah. of the time or whatever, you know, that. that's why like the friend circle thing is so good to like you know really be take stock of like what's around you because by osmosis is that what it is like osmosis i think i'm using the right word like you absorb whatever that yeah. is you'll start to be like it like that is like you know so if they're out ethics they're not doing the right thing or if they're like it will just start to become like is there you. anybody in your life that you actually admire and want their life yes for me no there's nobody oh. that i look and i'm like wow, you're doing so good. I actually want what you have or I would actually take your advice. And I actually was taking advice from people who I genuinely don't want anything to do mm. with them or their own lives. So let me tell you, because I haven't been feeling in a great place like until just recently, let's just say, and I've still got like lots of work to do forever for the rest of the time. But um, I've actually only started. Re so I was cutting myself off from the people that I actually really enjoyed that really love me mm -hmm. for me, because I think secretly I knew that I wanted to do more harm to myself and be in that. And I didn't want to expose them to it. So oh, okay. like I was like, but I feel like I've missed well, out caring. on so much time. And I felt really, yeah, because I'm such a loner, like I'll go away and isolate and just, mm. you know, I have to, I don't usually reach I think some really unhealthily, I don't usually reach out to anyone else. I just kind mm -hmm. of figure it out somehow. And then like up until recently, I'm like getting out of that. And a lot of that is the support groups I've been going to for the last two years and like all of that information. And then just getting a little bit older too, because I'm like, oh, whatever, everyone has these. I thought, I, I think I'm the only person in the world that, you know, has bad situations or feels a certain way or feels unworthy or like, yeah. you know, I was always kind of leaning on other things to make me feel validated, like, 
you know, in the beginning it was like my dad's money, then it was who I was hanging out with, and then it was like, you know, so like now I'm like, whatever, no one actually gave a shit about any of that stuff. They all have more than I would ever have mm-hmm. or know more than I Or they like, don't you know, even yeah. care. Yeah, that, and that's they the really thing, they would care. not care, yeah. I have friends that don't have as much as me, but yeah. they genuinely don't care. Yeah. They don't, they're happy yeah. in their lives, they're yeah. happy, and those are the people that truly yeah. are supportive. It really isn't about what you can get from the person. Exactly, but I wasn't thinking that I was, I'm not like, enough you know yeah, so like why unworthy. would they wh- like i'd always be curious like why are like nice people with their heads <laughs> like literally one of them that i'm thinking about right now she used to change my diapers my dad and her but dad were best friends for 25 mm-hmm. years she's always been there for me she's so amazing and i've been avoiding her for the last two years like honestly yeah. and i'm this and i'm like why would i do that to myself there's never been a time where she's ever m- given me the assumption that i wouldn't just be enough and like that mm-hmm. like just hang out with me because she thought for some other thing that i was cool because of a b and c but it's not the case like i'm i have to get better with that and you have mm. to get better with that you know like we are enough and yeah. we have to give people a chance to love us but in a really healthy way because like a healthy obviously way, yeah. i decided my red flag for a friendship is if they start mm. giving me advice when i'm not asking for it yeah that's my red flag for friends mm. yeah. i won't continue to be your friend yeah i don't care about anything else mm. i don't care what you're doing in your life as long as it's not affecting me i don't care how much you make i don't care i don't care yeah. about i don't care how you look but do not give me negative comments or advice. Don't comment on the way I look. Don't comment on what I'm doing. Like none of that can happen. Mm. None of it. (sighs) Scary. I know. (laughs) Well, you know what? You just need people to listen to. Why do people need to give you advice? Like Because they want that advice. They're speaking out what they want to do for themselves, but they're not realizing that I'm sensitive. I realize that I'm sensitive and it's okay for me to be sensitive. Like I'm really a a sensitive person. Seriously. Mm. Seriously. With my bob. (laughs) (laughs) That's how you got the bob so people can know. (laughs) I got the bob because I didn't want to blow dry the hair. Oh, is that helps a lot because it's shorter. It helps. All that extensions (laughs) down to here when I'm in the water, I can't get that ocean water out. And I didn't want to spend two hours a day blow drying my hair. That is wasted time. It is a waste of time. Well, I love this. Jeez, we've gone deep on this one, but it's good. There's growth. I feel like if you watched our first episode until now. I stopped smoking weed. I don't oh smoke God. weed anymore. Yes, oh I know. So why did you do that? What did you I, feel was the downside I to that? I felt like my eyes weren't as like vibrant and like sparkly to people. Like seriously, I've heard that. I felt like my skin, it was affecting my skin. I felt like it was a, literally affecting the way I looked. I miss it. I'm not going to lie. Like yeah. I miss smoking weed right before I go to sleep and just watching TV and calming myself yeah. down. But then I wake up in the middle of the night and I got to smoke to go yeah. back to sleep. Then it's still kind of in my brain when I wake up. And I just was like, I got to completely cut it out. I, I kind of miss it too, by the way. Like I love I, I, There's so many weed cafes now too where I'm like, fuck, it's such it's a hard. fun lifestyle. And also my favorite thing, just jamming around the house myself, a little bit stoned, having a little bit of snacks. Same. And like, I'll, I'll hold Moo Moo a little tighter. I'll, and just cleaning. I'll just, yes, you want to exactly. do it high. I want to be high it in the Uber. makes you stop and put music on and then light a little bit. <laughs> yes. Like, I'm like, so slow. What are you yeah. doing, meth? <laughs> meth would not make kidding. me put on a um, incense and a candle. I'd probably be climbing up the walls and scratching things. I guess um, um, they say meth's a lot like Adderall, so I can definitely attest it to is. my Adderall is. addiction. So <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's yeah. called amphetamine salts on the bottle. Meth. Oh wait. Yeah. 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 Right. Ah. Mm, whatever. Yeah. Crack ah. meth. Sure. Uh, our meth head producers have confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's hit a couple of these questions because yes. we are running out of time. Um, okay. Sure. Heartbreakers hotline. First voicemail is from Tom. We have a Tom voicemail. Yay. Let's hear it. Uh, hi, Elsa. This is Tom. Um, I was just wondering, um, I don't mean it sarcastically at all. I was just wondering what was like going through your mind before your very first scene. And like I said, I don't mean that sarcastic. Like, hey, what the hell were you thinking, woman? I just, I oh. uh, just wondering. Um, okay, bye. Thanks. Sweet Tom. That was so nice. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> um, 
I was scared. Like, obviously, I was so nervous. Was it a big production for your no, first one? No, it was one? a small oh, yeah. one. So it was just, it was such a small set. I was nervous, but they made me feel so comfortable. They were just like, oh, you're so pretty. You're so cute. You're going to do such a good job. The male talent was super nice about showing me what to do. Like what, because it is different than regular yeah. sex. People know that the angles are different. Everything's they different. They have to get different angles. Yeah, to get ah. the camera in there to see. Right. A doggy is actually like really turned out and the ass is spread and actually it's you have to really, be so fit to be able to do more because if you're you, holding it yourself in you some fit. angles, it's like planking. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it makes it some yeah. I remember I started to my legs started to get like a little bit muscular and my agent was like, Are you working out? I was like, No, it's the reverse cowgirl because you gotta squat. <laughs> but I really was I was nervous. Sex exercise. But, this is a new yes, workout tape that we need. Oh my god, it satisfies so many um of the different niches. Yeah. <laughs> Exercise, it's a workout tape, and you get it off. I think, I'm surprised they don't have that. Should we mm -hmm. make that? I know. Oh my God. God, someone's going to steal it now. Okay, if Beautiful. anyone wants to know just the audio version, it is raining now and the wind is coming in sideways. We just want to include you in this whole process. Elsa is freezing. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> so cool. <laughs> We're going to see if I'm we can okay slide a door it. behind us just because the water is coming in. It's okay. Well, thanks for that, Tom. Um, so you were... Um, I was nervous, but just like regular nervous. I don't know if anything was really going through my head because my original plan was just to do a few scenes just to get some quick money and also get some like, you know, a fan base. Mm -hmm. And then it was so easy that I really... What was going through my head was actually more excitement. Seriously. Really? Surprisingly. Yeah. About I the money scared. or the The getting, money, like, the, way the, I, the way people are making me feel on set. Right. I never really had too many bad experiences well, in good. the industry. And, and, you know. Yeah. Well, you're always really um, complimentive of, like, you don't have yeah. anything bad to say. I don't. Yeah. Um, okay. The next question. You, okay. I'm a 47-year-old male and I've never been married. Sadly, I'm now at the age where I realized I may have fucked around too much in my past and left myself without a life partner. I was Mr. Bachelor casual sex for relationships, thought relationships were for suckers, but I had a health scare and I've been looking at love differently. Any tips for an almost 50-year-old without kids to not look like a total tool and become marriage material? How does he become marriage well, material? Well, looking like a tool is just like living like a tool just don't live like an asshole yeah um, and the language that you use which you're saying is the past like you know fucked around it's okay acknowledge what you've done in the past mm. acknowledge what you know you've done wrong oh i fucked around too much i maybe lied i maybe cheated i maybe did this and just don't do it again mm. also there's tons of people in their 50s who are looking for love right i yes. just saw the golden bachelor they were all talking oh, about I how love the golden they bachelor. really were struggling to find love at, at an older age and how that show itself yeah. made them feel more confident at that age and there's tons of people that i realize that are single yeah. later in life too and i would actually get on like the old school dating stuff like match.com yeah. yes. all those things are still very like yes. tons of people on there this brings up a point like people at like 50 seem to like just kind of think oh well my time is done no but imagine how many other people are out there thinking the same thinking thing the same and thing. they're single also plus we're living such longer lives now there's like three parts four parts to your life you know mm -hmm. you've got your 20s and 30s and 40s and then you go into that 50s and 60s i mean people aren't really I would clean up your place. Like, I feel like a man who's been a bachelor all this time probably doesn't have that feminine of a space. And that doesn't mm. mean like have female stuff there, but get some candles, get some blankets. That really mm. makes it like more approachable yeah. for a female. It's something that's, make it smell good in your home. Yeah. Bring some colors into there. Guys love yeah. like navy. Their sheets are navy and always like yeah. dark and stuff. Get and some, old. An old. Old get some, sheets make the it, feminine in a way does that make sense yeah new pillows new yeah. you know make your space clean target go to target they yes. have all the best shit there way like fair the all stuff. of them yes. super cheap and then get on i like the oh, there's so many dating apps out Old there and some of them people, cater to yeah. the people in that age and also try to date around your age if you I want something or, serious or 40 yeah. because Oh, he said he was 47, Yeah, he's right? 50. 50. So, yeah, do 40s even. That's fine. Yeah, 50s. Love that I wouldn't for you. Go young. I wouldn't go younger than 38. 
get out there, Mr. X Bachelor, who's now going to be marriage material. Absolutely. And be confident. Know that you're mm. marriage material just because you mm. already have acknowledged that you need to change a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Last question is, my neighbors keep complaining about my boyfriend and I being too loud when we have sex. Is this bullshit complaint or should we take it seriously? I've been getting into arguments with them about it and try to keep it quiet after 10, but I don't know. Is that kind of prudish? So you're going to be surprised by my answer. I actually do think you should keep it down. I think it's very disrespectful to expose people to your sex life when they have nothing to do right. with it. I think it's also extremely ridiculous to be so loud that your neighbors are complaining. There's no way that sex needs to be screaming on the yeah. top of your lungs. You have to be screaming on the top of your lungs. I don't think it is prudish. I think you need to be respectful. Or I get would, a hotel room. Go or somewhere else. Or get a hotel else. room yeah. or switch a different to a different yeah. part of the room yeah. where they can't hear you or just be a little That's bit quieter. That's true, if I'm in a house next door and I can hear- Every night and they're screaming yeah. on the top of their lungs and it's not even about them being prude, it's about respect. They may have kids too. They may they have, have kids, here. they may just be sick of it. I wouldn't want to hear that. I did not expect to answer like that and I do get it, like feel like- You think it's prudish? No, it's, yeah. because here's the thing. I think if you're, you shouldn't be exposed to someone else's sex life. Yeah, That's their sex you're life. not asking like, for that. Like you're not asking for that, yeah. yeah. So that totally makes sense. It doesn't mean don't have sex, yeah. it does. And I also don't think you should be getting into arguments yeah. with your neighbors in general, because that's just <laughs> not like live a- there. Everybody yeah, needs it's to like live there. This over is not anything. a good idea. All right, well, this was so fun. Thank yeah. you so much. We are going to be back next time. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube. We are now on OFTV also. Yes. Um, and everywhere else you find yeah. us. Absolutely everywhere. Yay. Have a good week, guys. Bye.